All right, so we got a lot to talk about in this video. We're going to look at inverse functions. Uh, we're going to learn how to determine if a function is inverse, has an inverse. Uh, in other words, determine if it's one to one. We're going to learn how to find the inverse. Uh, we're going to look at what the graph of inverses look like. And we'll talk about uh, having to restrict the domain and that kind of stuff. And we will uh, look at the graphs of inverse functions. All right, so first thing, we've got definition of a one-to-one -one function. So if a function has no two ordered pairs with different first coordinates and the same second coordinate, then the function is called one-to-one. -one. Now, this might sound kind of familiar. Uh, when you did the section on functions, and you had a set of ordered pairs like we have right here. Remember, in order for that to be a function, you couldn't have the same first coordinate with different second coordinates. In other words, you couldn't have the same x value with two different y values. Well, for a one-to-one -one function, you can't have the same y value with two different x values. All right, so let's look at the examples, and I think it'll clear it up. Uh, so let's see the first one it says determine whether each function is one to one so you can see here that we don't have the same y coordinate with two different x coordinates so this one is one to one so that would be the answer all right so if, if it doesn't, if that doesn't make sense, wait till we work the second one and then I think it'll clear it up. All right, so let's look at this second one. Well, you can see that this one is not one to one. Okay, if you see here, do you see how we have the same y coordinate corresponding to two different x coordinates? that makes it not one to one and look and we also have another one with this right here the same y value corresponding to two different x values okay it's not one to one but all you have to do is have have two sets like this okay i mean we, we didn't after we after we see this the two y coordinates corresponding to two different x coordinates we can stop right there and say it's not one to one it just so happens this one has another set like that. All right. And so hopefully that clears this one up. If you look, notice in this, prob in this problem up here, we don't have the same Y coordinate in any of the points. Okay. So we're not going to have the same Y with two different X's. All right. So that makes it one to one. All right. Now the horizontal line test. So what if we have a graph? Can we determine if a graph is a is a one-to-one -one function? Well, the horizontal line test is similar to the vertical line test. I mean, they tell us two different things, but if you remember back on the vertical line test, remember to determine if the graph was a function, you would draw a vertical line through it, and if a vertical line did not intersect the graph in more than one point, then that meant it was a function, okay? So remember, if you drew a line through a graph, if it intersected the graph in two or more points, it was not a function. Well, this is the horizontal line test. So if each horizontal line crosses the graph of a function at no more than one point, then the function is one-to-one. -one. So in other words, if you draw a horizontal line through a graph and it intersects that graph in two or more points, then that means it is not one-to-one. -one. So let's use the horizontal line test to determine whether the functions shown are one-to-one. -one. So you can see here, if you draw a horizontal line through the graph, it intersects in one, two places. It intersects in more than one place. So this is not one to one. And then for this one, no matter where we draw a horizontal line, it's only going to intersect this graph in one place. 
it'll never intersect this graph more than once, a horizontal line. So this one is one to one. All right. All right, so let's look at this. So to prove that a function is one to one, we must show that if f of x of one equals f of x of two, then x one has to equal x two. All right, so see, if you're given a function like this, this is a little bit different, okay? So w one way is, one way to show this is by showing this right here, okay the other way is if you know what the graph looks like then you can determine if it's a function or not i mean if it's a one-to-one -one function okay that's that's another way you can do it but let's uh let's apply this property here all right so to start off we start off by saying f of x sub one is equal to f of x sub 2. All right, so let's see what we get when we do this. So f of x sub 1, so remember, if you had something like f of, say, 4, then what would you do? You would put the 4 in for x, so that would be 2 times 4 plus 1 over 4 minus 1, okay? Well, all this means is you replace each of the x values with x1. All right. All right. So we've got two times x sub one plus one over x sub one minus three, and that equals f of x sub two. So we're going to replace each x with x sub two. So two times x sub two plus one over x sub two minus three. All right. And then what do we do? Well, now we solve it, okay? So to solve this, we can use, uh, we can cross multiply. So this is two x sub one plus one times x two minus three equals two x sub two plus one times x sub one minus three. And then we Fold each side out, so that's going to be 2x1x2 minus 3x1 plus x2 minus 3 equals 2x1x2 minus. Whoop. Hang on, hang on. This right here should be 6 minus 6 x2 all right and then we've got plus plus x1 and then minus 3 all right so you can see that if we subtract 2x1 x2 to both sides those cancel out and then you can see that uh, All right, and you can see that the minus three and the minus three cancel out. So we're left with negative six x one plus x two equals negative six x two plus x one. All right. So now let's get everything on one side. So if I add six x two, to both sides and add 6x1 to both sides then that is going to give me 7x2 equals 7x1 and then if we divide both sides by 7 I get x2 equals x1 okay so this shows this is 1 to 1 all right because see what we did is we set this equal to this, f of x1 equal to f of x2. And what did we end up with after we did all of this right here? We ended up with x1 equals x2. All right. 
All right, so let's look at this example. So I'm going to start out with g of x1 equals g of x2. So if I plug the x1 in, that's absolute value x1 equals absolute value x2. All right. So we get this. Okay. So does this mean, okay, so does this mean that x1 equals x2? Okay. Is that the case? Well, let's think about it. Well, what if x1 is equal to 3 and x2 is equal to negative 3? What if we have that? Well, then if that's the case, then we would have what? The absolute value of 3. I'm plugging it into here. And we have the absolute value of negative 3. Are these the same? Yes, these are the same. This would absolute value of 3 is 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is 3. But you can see that x1 and x2 are not the same. But I did get the same when I did this. So this means not 1 to 1. Okay. So th those problems there are, are a little more difficult to see and stuff, but but basically what you're doing is you're you're starting out with this, and you've got to see if you can end up with this right here. Okay. All right. So now we've got definition of an inverse function. It says the inverse of a one-to-one -one function f is the function f inverse, and this is the notation we use for it where the ordered pairs of f inverse are obtained by interchanging the coordinates in each ordered pair of f. All right. So notice what it says here, the inverse of a one-to-one -one function. So in order to find the inverse, the function has to be one-to-one. -one. If it's not a one-to-one -one function, then it does not have an inverse. All right. So let's look at this. So for each function, determine whether it is invertible. If it is invertible, then find the inverse. So to determine if it's invertible, we have to see if it's one to one. So remember when we have a set of ordered pairs, well, you can see here, I have the same Y coordinate with two different X coordinates. So this one is not one to one so that means it's not invertible okay it's not one to one so it's not invertible all right so let's look at this one okay so is the is this one one to one well you can see i don't have the same y coordinate anywhere so that means it's invertible. It's, it's one to one, so we can find the inverse. So the inverse is equal to, now what does it say to do? Where is it? Okay, if it is one to one function, f is the fun function f inverse, where the ordered pairs of f inverse are obtained by interchanging the coordinates in each ordered pair of f. So all that means is you you just swap the x and y values and there's your inverse right there okay so those are easy maybe your teacher will put a bunch of those on the test all right all right so there's our there's the inverse all right, so now we have another example. Let f equal this. They want us to find f inverse, f inverse of 3, and f inverse circle f of 1. All right, so first, let's find 
F inverse. So we can see this is one to one. We don't have the same Y coordinate anywhere. So the inverse would be three, one, four, two, and seven, five. All right, so there's the answer for part A. Now part B, they want us to find F inverse of three. All right, so you, you've, in the in previous sections in a college algebra class, you've done this before. You've evaluated a function where you're given a set, a set of ordered pairs. So what we have here is we're, we're on the F inverse function, which is this, and we can see that X is three. Well, when X is three, what's Y? It's one. And so there's your answer, okay? And then C, let's do F inverse circle F of one. All right, so remember, this right here is the previous section of a college algebra course. It's the section right before this one, typically. So remember, just write this out. This is F inverse of F of one. All right, so what is f of one so we've got f inverse f of one so we have to go back to f okay see because we're on f so when x is one when x is one y is three and now we've got to find f inverse of three so now we're up here on this inverse function so when x is three y is one and there's your answer All right, so now here, we've learned how to, uh, I don't know why I spelled strategy like that. All right, so, so far we've learned that we've had an ordered pair and we learned how to find the inverse by just swapping the X and Y coordinates. Now, what if we're given a function like these next examples? How do we find the inverse? Well, we use this switch and solve strategy. And all you do is you just follow these steps. Change f of x to y, swap the x's and y's, solve for y, and then change y to f inverse x. Change it to the f inverse x symbol. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on these. We've got quite a few here to work, several examples. All right, so just, just follow the steps. So it says change f of x to y. All right. And then we interchange the x's and the y's. So all the x's become y's and all the y's become x's. All right. And then we solve for y. So we're going to subtract 1 to both sides. So that's x minus 1 equals 2y. And then we divide everything by two. And so I get y equals x minus one over two. All right, and then what do we do? We change the y to the f inverse symbol. So f inverse of x is equal to x minus one over two. All right, and I just wrote the f inverse over here. It doesn't matter if you write it over here or if you write it like this okay either one's correct it doesn't matter just t typically when I do this I'll just write the F inverse on the left hand side and then what it equals on the right hand side but it doesn't matter it's the same thing all right so how about this one all right so the G of X let's change it to Y so that's X cubed plus 5 over 2 and then we interchange the x's and y's so I've got x equals y cubed plus 5 over 2 and then I solve for y all right so what am I going to do here I'm going to multiply through by 2 to get rid of that 2 and so I get 2x equals y cubed plus 5 2 times x I'm sorry that should be an x there shouldn't it 2 times x is 2x, and then 2 times this, well, the 2's cancel. 
and that leaves me with the y cubed plus 5. Then I need to subtract 5 to both sides. And so that's going to give me 2x minus 5 equals y cubed. And then I do what? I take the cube root of both sides. Okay, so that's going to give me y, right? Now watch this. Just to save yourself from having to write an extra step, if I take the cube root of both sides, that's going to leave me with y, right? And then what would I do in the next step? Okay, if I wrote the y down, equals, okay, what would I do with the y in the next step? I would change it to the inverse symbol, right? So let's just go ahead and write that inverse symbol. And I'm taking the cube root of both sides, so that's the cube root of 2x minus 5. And there's your answer. See, normally what you would do is you would have uh, the cube root of 2x minus 5 is equal to y. Okay, that would be in there. But what I did is I just went ahead and did did some, did a little bit in my head. See, like from this one, instead of going from here to here, I just went from here to here. I just went ahead and changed this in my head and wrote it down. Okay, just save you, save you from having to write one step, I guess. Okay, but there's your inverse. All right, so how about this one? Well, let's see what we've got. So we've got y equals 2x plus 1 over x minus 3. All right, so now let's swap the x's and y's. So I get x equals 2y plus 1 over y minus 3. Now, to solve this, I can look at that as being over 1, and I can cross multiply. So I get x times y minus 3 equals 1 times 2y plus 1. And then, and what am I doing? I'm solving for y, right? So let's clear the parentheses. So I get xy minus 3x equals 2y plus 1. Now, I'm solving for y. So everything with a y has to come to one side. Everything that doesn't have a y goes to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 2y to both sides, and I'm going to add 3x to both sides. So I get xy minus 2y equals 3x plus 1. And then you see here how I have a common factor of y. I can factor that out. So y times x minus 2 equals 3x plus 1. And I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by x minus 2. And so that's going to leave me with just y over here. So I'll go ahead and change it. F inverse x is equal to 3x plus 1 over x minus 2. And there's your inverse. All right, let's look at the next problem. So I've got y equals x squared plus 2. And then I'm going to swap the x's and y's. So I've got x equals y squared plus 2. I've got to solve for y, so I'm going to subtract 2 to both sides. Okay, so I've got x minus 2 equals y squared. All right, now I square root both sides. So I'm going to get what? I'm going to get y equals what? All right, pause the video and think about it for a minute. What do we get? All right. So we get y equals negative square root of x minus 2 or y equals square root of x minus 2. Don't forget that. Square root in both sides, that's the square root property. It's just like when you had this. x squared equals 9. x equals what? Plus or minus 3, right? Same thing here. Now, my question is, which one's the inverse? Okay, notice we got we got two solutions here. But let's go back and think about this for a minute. If you remember at the earlier in the video, 
we said that the inverse of a one-to-one -one function, the inverse of a one-to-one -one function. So let's look at x squared plus 2. Let's think about what that graph looks like. So if I look at that, that graph looks like this. And you can see that this does not pass the horizontal line test. Okay, so that means it's not one to one. So that means it doesn't have an inverse. Okay, so when we came across this problem, we could have, we, we didn't even need to do this. We could have just looked at this and says it's not, and said it's not one to one, so it doesn't have an inverse. Okay, now let me ask you this. What if I do this? What if I erase that side of the graph? Is it one to one now? Yes, it's one to one now. It passes the horizontal line test, so it's one to one. So what I've done is on this graph, I erase this left hand side. In other words, notice I'm not coming out on the x-axis. I'm not using n the negative values of x. I'm only using x values from 0 to infinity to graph this thing. So what if I came up here and on this problem I added for x greater than or equal to 0? Okay. If I add this to the problem, then that's saying, okay, f of x is equal to x squared plus 2, but that's only for x values that are greater, or greater than or equal to 0. So that's only using the right-hand side of the graph because, see, the, the positive x values are over here. I'm not graphing anything over here. So that makes it one-to-one. -one. So what I've done is I've restricted the domain of this function, and that makes it one-to-one. -one. And so now, since it's a one-to-one -one function, I can find the inverse. Okay, and, and let me just state this real quick. The problem, the problem could have said for, for x less than or equal to zero, then that would have gotten rid of that part of the graph, and it would have made it one to one and we could find the inverse okay so the reason I'm showing you this is when you're more than likely when you're finding the inverses of these functions and they give you something like this this part right here will be a part of the problem okay this will this will be given to you in the problem in other words if you saw this problem in a textbook it would say Find the inverse of f of x equal x squared plus 2 for x greater than or equal to 2. So you don't have to worry about this right here in the problem because they're going to give it to you. But I just wanted to explain that so you know why it's there. Okay, It's there to make this function one-to-one. -one. All right. Now, let's... Uh, Let's figure out what our answer is. So which one is our answer? Is it this one or this one? Now I know what I know what you're thinking. It's the one over here on the right, and that is correct. But do you know why it's that one? Okay, do you know why? So I want to go back up to a previous problem that we worked where we uh where we found the inverse. Of a relation so I'm gonna grab that problem copy and paste it down here I'll pause the video while I do it all right so remember remember this problem right here that we that we worked earlier where we had a set of ordered pairs and we had to determine if it was one-to-one -one, and if it was we would find the inverse okay so this is your function and this is your inverse so Let's, let's look at this. So let's just look at the function. Notice the domain 
of this function is 3, 5, 7, 9. And the range is 1, 2, 4, 8. Okay, that's for G. Remember the domain, that's the X values. The range is the Y values. Now, look at the domain and range of the inverse function. So the domain is 1, 2, 4, 8. The range is 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay, so that's the domain and range of each. Now what I want you to notice here is notice that the domain of the function is the range of the inverse. And then also the range is the domain. The range of the function is the domain of the inverse. All right. So we know up here in our problem, we know that this is the domain of our function. So that means this, this right here, is the range of our inverse. So which one of these has a range of 0 to infinity? Well, we know any time we take the square root of a number, we're going to get 0 or a positive number. We will never get a negative number when we take the square root. So that means this one is not our inverse. This one is. So we have f inverse is equal to square root of x minus 2. Now, at the same time, let's look and see if this said for x less than or equal to 0. Instead of the problem saying this, what if it said this? Well, then we would want to know which one is going to give us negative values. Well, if we look at this one, If we look at this one, well, remember the square root, that's going to always give us positive values. So they're always going to be positive, but it has the negative. So this one's going to always give us negative answers. So if this were swapped, if it was x less than or equal to 0, then this one would be our inverse. Okay, so that's, that's how you can check that. That's how you decide which one is your inverse. All right, so let's look at this one and we're going to actually have to we're going to have to kind of do this with this one also. So, this one is the inverse of a square root function. Okay? Now, square root function it's 1 to 1, so we can find an inverse. So, we've got uh, let's see y equals the square root of x plus 2 minus 3. Swap the x's and y's. Okay. And then I need to solve for x. So I'm going to add 3. So I get x plus 3 equals y plus 2, square root of that. And then I need to do what? I need to square both sides. And so I get x plus 3 squared is equal to y plus 2. And then I'm going to subtract 2 to both sides. And so I'm going to get y equals. So I'm going to go ahead and change this f inverse equals x plus 3 squared minus 2. Okay. Now. That was, that was nice and everything. I mean, that was easy to find the inverse. But we have a problem, don't we? So what's our, what's our problem? Well, for this one, <clears throat> it's not one-to-one. -one. The inverse is not. It's not one-to-one. Because -one. remember, this is the graph of a 
quadratic function, which is a parabola, fails the horizontal line test. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to restrict this domain. Okay. We've got to restrict the domain and or write down the restriction for the domain to make it one to one. Now remember what we talked about up here. Okay. The domain of the function is the range of the inverse. But also the range of the function is the domain of the inverse. So if we look at this problem here, f of x equals square root of x plus 2 minus 3. What's the range of this function? Well, the range of this function is the domain of the inverse. So if we look at this, if you look at this first part right here, you can see that the square root of x plus 2, the, the solutions that we're going to get out of that, is 0 to infinity, right? 0 to infinity. That's the solutions we're going to get out. But we're also subtracting 3. So that's going to go from negative 3 to infinity. You see that? That's all the answers that we'll get out of this entire function is negative 3 to infinity. That's the range of that function. Okay, So we put that restriction on our inverse so we would say 4 for x greater than or equal to negative 3. And that, and now that makes it one to one. And so this would be your answer. And yes, you have to include the 4x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Because if you look at this function here, look at this. All right, this is x squared plus, this is x plus 3 squared minus 2. So if you remember from the previous sections, there's the graph of x squared, right? So we shift it to the left 3 and down 2. So to the left 3 and down 2, that would make the graph look like this of our inverse. Okay? But what am I saying? for x greater than or equal to negative 3. So here's negative 3, and if I'm greater than or equal to, that means that's taken that part of the graph off, and you can see now that makes it 1 to 1. Okay? So that's what it does by putting that, that restriction on there. All right, so reflection property of inverse functions. So if f is a one-to-one -one function, then the graph of f inverse is a reflection of f with respect to the line y equals x. All right, so find the inverse of the function f of x equals square root of x minus 1 and graph both f and, and, and f inverse on the same coordinate axis. All right, so first let's just start out by finding the inverse. So I have f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 1. All right, so I've got y equals square root of x minus 1. And then I'm going to interchange the x's and y's. So x equals square root of y minus 1. All right, and then we have to do what? We have to square both sides. So I get x squared equals y minus 1. And then I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So that is going to give me y by itself. So that's going to be f inverse is equal to x squared plus 1. Now this is just like the problem we worked before. This is not 1 to 1, so I have to add 4 what? Well i got to restrict this. What's the domain of this? It's the range of the function, right? 
So with square root, the only values that I'm going to get out for square root is 0 to infinity. That's the range of this function. So this is for x greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Now, they want us to graph this thing. So if we graph this, f of x equals the square root of x minus 1, well, if you remember, we, we graphed these things before. Uh, you did this in a previous section in college algebra. So the first number you choose is 1. That makes underneath the radical 0. So if we choose 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. So that's that point there. And then I would plug in 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, right? Square root of 1 is 1, so that gives me the point 2, 1. And then I would plug in probably, say, uh, you, I mean, you can plug in 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So that would give you, you know, something up here like that. But this graph looks something like this. Okay, I'm just sketching it. Now let's look at this, x squared plus 1. So let's plug in the 0. We can only plug in positive values, right? This domain's restricted. So if I plug 0 in, I get 1 as an answer. And then if I plug 1 in, I get what? 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2, so I get 1, 2. And so this graph is going to look something like this. And then if you graph in the line y equals x, well, that's what? That's 0, 0. That's the y-intercept. And then the slope is what? 1. So m is 1 over 1. Our y-intercept is 0, 0. Okay? So that's rise over run, up 1 over 1. So that would be a point right there. And there's the line y equals x. You see that? And that's just what it says. It says uh, the graph of f inverse is a reflection of f with respect to the line y equals x. And there's your reflection right there. And that's what they're talking about. So that gives you a good idea. You can see what it actually looks like. Okay. All right. So, okay. So how about this one? Verifying whether f and g are inverses. So we've, they said, here's a function. What's the inverse of this function, right? Okay, well now what they're doing is they're saying, okay, here's two functions. Are they inverses of each other? All right. So to verify whether two functions are inverses, the functions f and g are inverses of each other if and only if f circle g of x is equal to x for every x in the domain of g and g circle f of x is equal to x for every x in the domain of f. So, so what we have to do here is we've got to find f circle g and g circle f and we've got to show that both of those are equal to x. Okay, so let's do that. So first, let's do this one. Let's do f circle g of x is equal to f of g of x. Okay, now if you're in a college algebra class, if you're in this section, you did this in the previous section, composition of functions. Okay, so this is equal to f of the cube root of x plus 1. All right, right, g of x, there's g of x. And now what do we do? We take this and we plug it in for x. So that's going to be the cube root of x plus 1 cubed. I just replaced the x with this, and then all that's cubed minus 1. And so this is what, when I cube a cube root, I just get what's underneath the cube root 
and so that equals x. So that checks. We're good with that one. All right, now let's go the other way with it. Okay, we've got to show that both of them equal x. So we've got g of f of x is equal to g of, and what's f of x? That's x cubed minus 1. And so we take the x cubed minus 1, plug it in for x. So that's going to be the cube root x cubed minus 1 plus 1. And so this is going to give me the cube root of x cubed. And the cube root of x cubed is x. So these are inverses. That would be yes. All right, so how about this one? All right, so let's do the same thing. So f circle g of x is equal to f of g of x, which is f of square root of x. All right. And so here we plug the square root of x in for x. So that's square root of x squared, which equals x. All right. So we're, we're good on that one. Okay. That one's fine. Now let's go the other way. G circle f of x. So that's g of f of x, which is g of x squared. And so this is going to be what? That is going to be the square root of x squared. All right. So now what does this equal? The square root of x squared is that x. Pause the video and think about that for a minute. Okay. Now, that's wrong. The square root of x squared does not equal x. Okay, Think about that for a second. This goes back to something you did a long, long time ago. You would have done this at the beginning of the, of the Cova College Algebra class. Remember, whenever you take the square root of something, you always get a positive answer. Your answer is positive whenever you take the square root, or if you take the fourth root, the sixth root, the eighth root, whatever, it's positive, okay? So do you remember, you remember what you had to do there, there to make sure it was positive? Absolute value, right? That ensures that it's positive. So this is equal to the absolute value of x. So what happened here is we've shown that not both of them, they don't both equal x. So this would be no, they are not inverses of each other. All right, so, so just remember when you're trying to determine if two functions are inverses of each other, you've got to show this. Okay, now let me say this on, on some problems. Okay, I've seen some problems where you go to calculate this and, you know, you do f circle g of x and you do g circle f of x. And let's just say the two functions we had. Okay, well, we're finished with both of these problems. This is just a little extra. I've seen where you get something like this. You get 5x and you get 5x. You get the same answer for both of them. <coughs> Would those be inverses of each other? The answer is no, because they both have to equal x. Not the same thing. They don't have to equal the same thing. They have to equal x. So, actually, if you're working a problem, and let's say you go and you're, and you're calculating f circle g of x, and you get 5x, you can just stop. You don't even have to do that one, because this doesn't equal x, so they're not going to be inverses. 
okay? So as far as, you know, finding the inverses of functions, there it's not really that bad. Some of them can get kind of, you know, some of them can get difficult. Like, you know, students all the time mess up on this one, okay? Uh, what they'll do is they'll, they'll usually, most of the time, they'll get this part correct, but they'll leave this off. Do not leave that off, okay? That's part of the problem, okay, or part of the solution, okay? So, so be careful. And then I hope you understand you know about this about this problem here okay I, I wanted I want you to understand why this is in is part of the problem okay it, we have to restrict that domain to make sure that it's that this is a one-to-one -one function see if if this right here was not in the problem then you couldn't find the inverse because it's not one-to-one -one. okay so I hope this video made sense, and I <clears throat> I do have another video finding the inverse of functions, and all it is is working problems like this, where, where you do that switch and solve strategy, okay? It's a video, I don't know how many problems, maybe five or so, something like that, of doing problems like this. That would be, <clears throat> that would be good practice. You could go watch that video, you know, just when the problem comes up, pause it, work it, and then play it to see if you worked it right. And that would be some practice for you. But I hope the video helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.